Good evening. Welcome to the Liberty Church of Christ for our Sunday evening worship. And we are so glad that you are with us to worship with us online. God willing, next week we will be worshiping in the General Assembly at 6 p.m. But we will continue putting up something here online for those of you that can't get out and worship with us on Sunday evening. But we're glad that you're with us tonight. We're going to sing and pray and preach. We trust that you had an opportunity to give of your means, as the Lord commanded, as well as to take the Lord's Supper, communion. Let's begin our worship tonight with a prayer. Father, we are coming before you, thanking you for all blessings. You are so good. You are so wonderful. And we praise you. We adore you. We give you all kinds of thanksgiving. We, we can't even tell you how grateful we are. God, we want to ask you for things too. We know that you want us to ask you for things. One thing that we're asking you for right now is for comfort. Comfort in the lives of people who have lost someone so dear to them. They've lost a husband. They've lost a brother. They've lost a a, a person that they are so close to, a friend. God, you know who they are, and you know what to do to give them the comfort that they need in this life. Not only for those that have lost loved ones, but those who are sick or they have things that are beyond their control that's causing their lives a great deal of conflict and problems. God, we lift them up to you and we ask that you will take away their fear and give them a stronger amount of faith to be comforted in peace with you and in their own lives. God, we ask that you will be with this upcoming election. You know that it's very important. All elections have consequences. This one seems to have great consequences. We pray that you will influence the election. We know that a lot of people are saying that this party influences, that party influences, this outside uh, forces are influencing the election. And they blame and point fingers at those uh, that will influence an election. God, we are just outright begging you to influence the election. We want to influence the election in a positive way, a godly way, in your way. Please, Lord, we confess that we are sinners. We confess that we don't know how to run our own country. Nobody is seems to have the answers, but God, we know that you do. So we pray that the leaderships that will be put into place in the next couple of days will be those kind of leaders that will implement policies and procedures and things that will be beneficial to this country and that will keep your word growing. God, we know that this country and all the countries of the world need principles that come from you. Watch over us now as we repent of our sins, confessing our faults, begging you to forgive us, and forgive our nation, and we ask that you will bless this lesson this evening as we worship you together in that portion of our worship. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Get your song books, those of you that have the song book, and turn to page 255. <clears throat> As we mentioned, we, we do what God wants us to do in our worship. We sing, pray, preach, take the Lord's Supper and give. In just a moment, we will have a lesson in our preaching part of our worship. Just had our prayer. Let's have our song. This song is to... Is to Set our minds for the lesson. And the name of this song is What a Friend We Have in Jesus. The name of the lesson, one word, I entitled it Fear. F-E-A-R. It seems, especially in this time, when we have the COVID crisis, the pandemic, we have an election coming up of great consequences, we have people telling us all sorts of things from all sorts of sides, and it invokes fear. And we're going to talk a little bit about that word fear. But we know that we have nothing to fear if we will trust in Jesus. What a friend we have in Jesus. 
Let's sing the first and the last verse. What a friend we have in Jesus, all our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. Are we weak and heavy laden, cumbered with a load of care? Precious Savior, still our refuge, take it to the Lord in prayer. Do thy friends despise, forsake thee, take it to the Lord in prayer. In his arms he'll take and shield thee, Thou will find a solace there. What a friend we have in Jesus and all of the loads of burdens that we can bring to him. We can put aside our fear because we can trust in our friend. This morning we talked about the prayer versus politics, politics and religion. We talked about how that we're on the verge of having a very important election. And we encourage folks to, to go out and vote. That is a privilege that we Americans enjoy that many countries throughout the world just don't have that privilege. Uh, they are told what to do and who's going to be their leaders. And they have no choice in the matter, but we do. And it's a wonderful thing that we have. So we need to go out and we need to vote. We need to vote our values. We need to vote our conscience. We need to vote our concern. Because certainly elections do have consequences. We are hearing from all sorts of places that if this person gets elected, then we're going to have a terrible economic crisis. If this other person gets elected, then we're going to have death and all sorts of crisis in that sense from climate and, and disease and pandemics and everybody's telling everybody that this is critical and it is it is very critical how we, it could determine the future course of the of the nation just like the election in 1860 with Abraham Lincoln versus Frederick Douglass and just like the election in the 1930s when, when FDR and, and Herbert Hoover went at it. Uh, these men went on to, to make policies and to make change that affects the course of our nation. These men that we're voting for Tuesday for president will make a difference in how the course of our nation goes. But let's not fear. Let's not, let's not be motivated by fear. This is going to happen if this. This is going to happen if that. Let's just look at the situation, look at our candidates and vote our values, vote our concerns, understanding that there are consequences. Vote what it is that will make a difference, that we feel like will make a difference in our lives, in our children's lives, and grandchildren's lives, the course of this nation. You know uh, what the candidates are standing for. Go vote for the one that, that you believe that will make a difference in a positive way. But don't vote out of fear. Just vote. Vote your value. And let God worry about the difference and what the outcome is. In 1 John chapter 4, in verse 18, here's what the Bible says. There is no fear in love, 
But perfect love casteth out fear, because fear hath torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. If we fear, we are, we are living a life of torment. We're in, in all sorts of uh, panic mode all the time. But if we understand that we have a friend in Jesus. Now, I'm not saying that whoever gets to be the next president, you know, that's, that's going to happen. God's in control. And he's listening to your prayer. He's listening to my prayer. But he put up kings in the past that were wicked kings. But he was in control. He put up kings in the past in the Bible that were very benevolent kings, good kings. Read uh, the kings, first and second kings. Some of them were very great, but make no mistake about it. God's in control. God's in control right now. We are living a life of torment if we're putting our confidence in our politicians and in our process. Let's just appreciate the fact that we do have a positive process in America and we can exercise that important right, the right to vote, and go out and vote our values and cast that vote and look at our concerns and cast that vote and then pray. Pray that God will direct it in a positive way. Let's use the word itself, fear, F-E-A-R. And let's look at a verse in the Bible and then pick out a, the words that spell out that name. A word for F, the word for E, the word for A, and the word for R in that one verse. Here is that verse. Acts chapter 10 Verse 35, Acts 10, 35. Here's what that verse says. But in every nation, he that feareth him and worketh righteousness is accepted with him. The first word in our study tonight is F. It's an F word because it's going to spell out the word fear, F-E-A-R. And the F word right there in Acts 10, verse 35, is fear. It says, but in every nation he that feareth him. Folks, we need to fear. But it's not fear of man. It's fear of God. Listen to Matthew chapter 10, verse 28. Fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather, Fear him which is able to destroy both body and soul in hell. Then he goes on to explain, Are not two sparing, sparrows sold for a farthing? Uh, that's cheap. You, you, for the very little money, a farthing, you can, you can get two sparrows. That's Birds are cheap. He says, And one of them, which is very cheap, what? Shall not fall on the ground without your father. God knows if something that's is so inexpensive and so cheap as a bird, a sparrow, let me tell you, God's watching. God's in control. God knows about that. But the very hairs of your head are all numbered. God knows how many hairs are on my head. Now, just a few days ago, there were a lot more, but I got a haircut. But he knows what was there before, what's there now, let me tell you, God is very much aware of all the details. So, because of that, verse 31, fear ye not, therefore, you are of more value than many sparrows. God values David Conley. God values my children. God values my grandchildren. God values all the seed that's going to be coming in, down to my generations until Jesus comes back. And God values you too. He values this country. He values all countries, of all people, all races, because he made them all. He knows. So I need to pray that God will influence this election in America, as well as governments all over the world. Influence them for the good of God, because I fear God. 
God is so powerful, and I sometimes forget that. I get so wrapped up in, in the news and what's going on in the media and what's going on, and I get so full of concern and so full of fear. But what am I fearing? I'm fearing the wrong thing. I need to be fearing God. God is much more powerful than all of the governments of all time and all future. Listen to Revelation chapter 14, verse 7. Saying with a loud voice, this is the revelation that John was given and he heard this uh, voice sounding. What did it say? It says, fear God, be afraid of God. Now certainly that carries with it the idea of being in awe of God, being in respect of God, because he deserves our respect and our reverence. But we should be afraid too. God is powerful. He says, fear God and give glory to him for... Why? Why should we do that? The hour of his judgment is come. So worship him that made heaven, earth, the sea, and the fountains of water. We ought to be in fear. We ought to be afraid. We ought to be scared because he made it all. We are members of the greatest country on planet earth, the United States of America, of all men, of all time. Everyone in the world, that if you're listening to this from another country, you would agree that this country, the United States of America, is a very powerful country indeed. But God is so much more powerful, much more powerful than all countries of the earth. He made the heavens. He made the earth. We should be afraid of God. Let's put our fear, our reverence, our respect to God. But the second word starts with the letter E. F-E-A-R. What is the E? Look at that verse again, Acts 10, 35. But in every nation, there's our E word, every. In every nation. Folks, God is no respecter of persons. He's not willing that any should perish. Listen to 2 Peter 3, verse 9. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but he's long-suffering. To us were not willing that any should perish, but that all shall come to repentance. God loves everybody. He loves the United States of America, the Americans. He loves the Russians. He loves the Chinese. He loves the British. He loves the Indians. He loves the Africans and the Germans. He loves them all. He created them all. And he's not willing that any should perish, but that all shall come to to repentance. Now that's the qualifier there. You've got to do that. He's not going to save it. He's not willing that any should perish, but they will. Many will, unless they come to repentance. We all need to, so we need to be praying in the fear of God that every nation should come to the fear of God and to repentance. Listen to Revelation twenty two seventeen, And the Spirit and the bride say, Come. And let him that heareth say, Come. And let him that is a thirst, thirsty, come. And listen to this. And whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. It's not going to cost you a thing. Who can take it? Whosoever will. Whosoever will. Whosoever wants to. I don't care who you are, red or yellow, black or white. You're precious in God's sight. And if you are willing, then you can take that water of life and it's free. God wants every nation to fear him. Matthew 11 verse 28 says, Come unto me. This is Jesus talking. Come unto me. Just like in the Revelation 22, 17 that we just read, he said, if you're thirsty, come. Whosoever will, let him come. Well, that's what Jesus is saying in Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. I'll give you rest. I want all of you that, are, that labor and are heavy laden. Who is that? That's you. That's me. We all have labor. We all have heavy ladens in this earth. Everybody is, has got problems. Come to Jesus. He'll save you. 1 Timothy 2, 4 says, Who will have all men to be saved? I want everybody saved, God says. Now, not everybody will, 
Because why? He says he wants all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. A lot of people will not come to the knowledge of the truth. So therefore, they won't be saved. But God wants every nation that fears him. Now let's look at the A word. F-E-A-R. What's the A word? Well, listen to that verse again. He says, but in every nation, he that feareth him and worketh righteousness is accepted with him. And there's our word, accepted. God accepts you. God accepts me. If we fear him, if we're part of those every nation, all the people that come, that come to the knowledge of the truth, he will accept you and he will accept me. Regardless of the results of November the 3rd election, he will accept me. I know the nation can go in one direction or the other direction. Horrible laws could be passed. Great laws could be passed. Good things could happen. Bad things could happen. But we are accepted by God Almighty. We're acceptable to him. Listen to Romans 14, 17 beginning. He says, for the kingdom of God is not meat and drink. It's not food and water. It's not physical. We think that this election is, is a physical, and it is. It's a physical thing. It's going to have physical consequences. All elections matter. And so you better be careful how you cast your vote and pray about it. But it's not all about physical things. What is it about? It's about righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. Then he says in verse 18, for he that is, has these things, he that is in these things, what? This righteousness and this peace and this joy. Listen, if you got those things and you serve Christ, then you're acceptable to God and you're approved of men. Folks, if you want to be accepted by God, that's so very important. Then you need to come to the knowledge of truth. You need to repent of your sins because you... People who repent is the one that he's going to uh, accept. You need to be baptized into Christ for the remission of those sins. And you need to rise to walk a new life. Walk in the light as he is in the light. He will accept those good works. Those works of goodness in the light. And those works of service. Listen to Hebrews chapter 12 verse 28. Wherefore, we receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved. Now, the United States has been so blessed by God. 200 and plus years, people have founded this country on biblical principles, on Christian principles. And God has blessed this country. And it has become the strongest country in the whole world, of the strongest country of all the history of man. But it can be taken away. It can fail. Policies can be put into place that causes uh, bankruptcy financially. It can cause moral bankruptcy. It can cause all sorts of problems, and, and it could ultimately fail. But we are part of a kingdom. We're accepted in God's kingdom, and it's a kingdom, the church, which cannot be moved. It will never fail. So let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptedly. That's, that's that A word, acceptably, with re reverence and godly fear. We need to pray that this election will come out in such a way that God can use our elected leaders to help us to have an environment where we can serve Him and give God the respect and the fear that He deserves. Proverbs 21.3 says, To do justice and judgment is more acceptable to the Lord than sacrifice. Doing the right thing, that's what God wants you to do. It's what God wants me to do, is the right thing. To accept me. And the final word that we're studying from F-E-A-R is an R word. And it's righteousness. Look at that verse again. Acts 10, verse 35, our key verse. But in every nation, he that feareth him 
and worketh righteousness is accepted with him. We got to do the right thing if we want to be accepted. If we fear God, whoever we are, we can be accepted if we do the right thing, if we are in righteousness and have fruits of righteousness. Listen to Philippians 1.11. Being filled with the fruits of righteousness, which are by Jesus Christ unto, this is why we do the right thing, what? Unto the glory and the praise of God. When we pray, we're asking God to influence this election that's coming up in a couple of days. But we're doing that not so we can be uh, wealthy or so that we can be the greatest nations on planet Earth. It's doing it so that we can glorify God and we can praise God. Now, bear in mind that there are some elected officials or some kings or some dictators all over the world that will not glorify God and they will not praise God. So we want to Pray that the elected officials will get in there that will give us the environment so that we can glorify God and praise God and that the Word of God will continue to spread. 1 John chapter 2, verse 29 says, If you know that He is righteous, know that everyone that doth righteousness is born of Him. You know He's right, so we got to be right if we want to be the children of God. You're not a child of God if you're not doing the right thing. Now, we all sin and we come short of the glory of God. That's true. But we aspire to be a child of God in doing righteousness. Listen to 1 John chapter 3, verse number 7. Little children. He, John is referring to the people he's writing to as his children. He loves them so much. But he says, let no man deceive you. Don't let nobody lie to you. Don't let them cover uh, your eyes or pull the wool over your eyes. Listen, he that doth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. So if you want to be a child of God, you want to be right like God, then you got to do right. And if you don't do right, then you're not right. Is he that doth righteousness is righteous. A lot of people will tell you, oh, I promise you this. And I promise you that. And I'm going to do the right thing by you and the right thing by this and the right thing. We've been hearing that for many months in this election cycle, this election year. But the one that does right is the one that is right. Worldly fear is not for Christians. Let me repeat that. Worldly fear is not for Christians. We don't need to participate in that. Now, we've got concerns. I'm concerned about the election and about who's going to be in power because people of power, we talked about that this morning, people of power make a difference in, in my life and make a difference in your life and make a difference in our future. So I have concern about that. But we need to understand that if we're a friend of God, we're a friend of, of Christ, then perfect love and that relationship, that's going, it's going to cast out fear. We need to trust in Jesus. So worldly fear is, is really not for us. So we don't need to choose, or we need to choose not to participate. Just don't participate in worldly fear. When people get on the television, I'm telling you what, gloom and doom and bad things, and, and you ought to be afraid, just, just choose not to participate. I'm not going to participate in that. I'm going to vote for my values, vote for my concern, and I'm going to pray that God will put the right people in the right place at the right time for His glory and His praise, not participating in worldly fear. But godly fear is for Christians, and we need to choose to participate. If we don't participate in godly fear, and come to the knowledge of the truth and repentance, then we're going to have something to fear, something truly to fear. Fear God. Keep his commandments. It's the whole duty of man, according to Solomon in Ecclesiastes. Let's pray.
Father, thank you so much for allowing us to pray to you. And we do ask that you will bless this upcoming election. And we pray that you will put the right people in the right place for your glory. We depend on you, God, not only in this country, but we pray for the leaders of all nations so that your will can be heard from around the world and can make a difference in the lives of people. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Really appreciate you being with us tonight, and we invite you to be back with us on Wednesday night at 7 o'clock right here on this Facebook, on the YouTube. We are studying through the Bible. So uh, join us at that time.